Hi crafties, so you've made something beautiful and now you want to list it for sale. Go to my shop to log on and don't worry if you move about here and you start doing some shopping and buying things from your fellow crafties. You can always get back to your crafties control panel by clicking on my shop. So this is where you'll be doing most of your work. Now today we're going to add a new product so we just click on add product And that's going to take us to a nice easy product listing screen with lots of helps and tips. Now if you're a new crafty, um, I hope you're watching this video and if you are, thank you. What I'd like you to do once you've listed your product, instead of clicking at the bottom add product, if you could click save to draft then give me a shout and what we'll do is a little bit of product coaching and make sure that you're fully confident listing all of your products on the website. So do give me a call. Okay, so before I list any products, what I do is think of the keywords and phrases that customers might search for when trying to find my product. Now, a good exercise is to use your brain and do a brain dump, but there are tools out there that can help us. And if you Google keyword search tool helper, you find lots of different things. Some are paid for, some are free. This is the one I use quite often because it's free. Now I want to uh, list my silver spoon necklace. So what I've done is typed spoon necklace here and done a search and it's given me lots and lots of different keywords and phrases that customers might possibly search on. So from that I've created my own list that I think are relevant to my spoon necklace. So what I'm going to try to do is incorporate a lot of lot of these words and phrases into my product name, my description and also my tags which I'll talk about later. So for my product name you can see we've got help tip here which says up to 70 characters. Now we want it to be short and sweet so the customer can get an idea of what the item is really really quickly uh, but also Google which or any search engines don't necessarily look past 70 characters, so that's 70 letters. Um, so anything more than that is actually diluting your search ranking within Google. So that's why I suggest 70 characters. So I want to uh, describe my uh, silver spoon necklace. And I want to incorporate some of those keywords, but I need to keep it short and sweet. So I'm going to call it Silver Heart Welsh Love Spoon Necklace. And now for my product description. And you can see here in the tips, it tells you to insert lots of keywords and phrases and try to use at least 200 words to describe the product. This helps customers get excited about the product, but also helps the search engines know exactly what your product is so that it puts it in front of customers. Now all of Conscious Crafties is um, search engine optimised but it really really helps if you tell Google what your items are because then your items also get listed in Google search results. So the first sentence needs to be um, packed with your keywords and phrases because that little bit is what Google and other search engines think is the most important piece. So I'm going to add a little bit here, which incorporates a lot of my keywords and phrases. Um, what I also want to do is tell a bit of a story about where the idea came from for creating my silver spoon. Now, obviously that's to do with the spoon theory, but it's also um, in Wales, they have uh, love spoons and um, I've been, um, in Wales for quite a while, I grew up there, so I have been inspired by that. So I've just added a little bit of story and romance around the idea as well, because people really love stories and if you can create a personality around your product, you're much more likely to be able to get sales. Now, it's also a good idea to tell people dimensions of products um, because sometimes you can't really tell from photographs. 
So I'm just going to add a little bit here. That explains exactly that it's an 18 inch chain. It's made from recycled spoon charm pendant. You can see I'm trying to still jam pack some of those keywords in there, but I'm also explaining it clearly for the customer so they know exactly what they're going to get. Also, um, a lot of items um, would um, help the customer if you inserted some care instructions in here. Now, because my item silver, it wouldn't hurt it to give it a good polish now and again. So I'm just going to add that here. Also, as this spoon is made to order, I'm very happy to modify it for customers. So I want to tell customers that. And the way that they can um, ask me some questions is by coming here and on the product page, they will see an ask the question button and that will open our messenger service. Uh, they will also see that button on our shop page as well as our product pages. So I want to tell customers that I'm really happy to make any changes that they like. So I'm just going to add that to the bottom here. So if you'd like something special, please ask me a question. Now the next section is number of days to hand make. And this is very important if your item isn't already made because we need to set customers' expectations of how long they're going to wait for their item. Now I always advise people to think about how long the item takes to make but also think about your sickness levels. You might have a couple of days in bed and I'm pretty sick. I spend most of my time in bed working on Conscious Crafties. So um, I'm actually going to say 10 days here because uh, my item does take a long time to make because it's carved from silver and I have to fire it and polish it and you know make it all sparkly. So um, I'm putting 10 days there just to cover myself so I, I don't have to panic and think, oh my God, I've got an order. How am I gonna manage this? So please, be kind to yourself and also set customers' expectations. Now, if the item is already made, leave this blank because you don't need to set customers' expectations because you're going to be able to post the item out pretty much straight away. But for me, I'm putting 10 days. Now, you can see here, I haven't added the word days. I don't need to do that because the, custom, uh, the computer will do that all for you. So just put a number in there and that will appear here. So it's very near the add to basket button and customers can refer to that. Okay, so the next section is the categories and you can see here I've asked, please, please, please only select the relevant categories. The reason for that is you can see on the website, there's lots of different categories here. And when customers tick in, you know, click in a category, they're going to want to see very relevant items. If they don't, what happens is they get very frustrated and they leave websites. And we really don't want them to leave Conscious Crafties because that might mean they might not buy our products or they might not buy fellow Crafties products. And we don't want that, do we? So please, please don't put a pink princess t-shirt in the men's shoes section. So you can see my little uh, spoon is a necklace. So I'm going to scroll straight down to the jewelry section. You can see we have an awful lot of categories. Whoops. Okay, so it's a necklace. Okay, it's got nothing to do with pets and it's got nothing to do with children and babies. Um, it does make a good gift for spoonies. Now you can see we've got a section here for uh, gifts and most items I would say would be able to fit into one of these sections and the gift category does get clicked on an awful lot by our customers so try and squeeze it in one of these categories if it's relevant. So I think that this is going to make a, a nice romantic gift and the reason for that is because it's got hearts on it, okay? And it would also make a nice gift for her and it's a gift for Spoonies as well because it refers back to the spoon theory. And yeah, it's definitely not in woman's clothes and it's not 
men's clothes and it's not an accessory either a lot of people put jewelry in accessories but we've got a whole section for jewelry let's keep it in there and um, because what happens is when our customers look in accessories they're bombarded by jewelry because most of the items on conscious crafties at least half is jewelry and if we put it in here then they won't be able to find uh, bags, brooches, you know, glasses case, hair accessories, it will all become consumed by the jewellery. So please don't put jewellery in the accessory section. Now that's the cards section. Um, it's got nothing to do with weddings, nothing to do with vehicles. Okay, there's these sections here which are all skills. And Unconscious Crafties, um, as, alongside handmade items, we also uh, can promote our skills and services and we would list that separately. So if we made jewellery, we would list our jewellery separately, but then we might do a listing to say that I have skills of jewellery making or I'm a childminder, things like that. Um, so um, because a lot of Spoonies can't craft, I didn't want to leave those out. Um, and also a lot of us were in very great careers and we've got skills as well as making crafts so it is I've opened up the site to skills and services that people can buy from us so just go in here it's not in the home decor section or home and garden it's not a disability aid it's not makeup let me see um, right the event section, this is often misused as well. Now, say for example, Christmassy things, you might think it's going to make a great Christmas gift, but the things that should go in there are festive items, so decorations, Rudolph, Santa, that type of thing should go in there. And I'm going to add this on, into Valentine's Day, and the only reason I'm adding it in there is because I think it is quite a romantic gift for a lady because it's got the hearts, and because it refers back to the love spoon, uh, Welsh love spoons, which is very romantic. Um, also, for this one, we've got a disability illness awareness section, and because it's a spoon and relates back to the spoon theory, I can add it to the awareness jewellery section. So I've got quite a few categories there. You wouldn't normally add quite so many, but they are all very relevant, as you can see. So the next section is tags. Um, tags um, are the keywords and phrases that we put together before we start to list our item. And you can see I've got so many here, and I couldn't possibly add all of those into my description because it might not make sense to customers and it might look to Google as though I was trying to uh, overcompensate really with, with those words and the sentences would not make sense and Google can actually tell that um, because it looks for readability as well in its algorithm. So tags are where we can add all of these keywords. These won't be seen by the customer and they are just seen by search engines. Now you can see, when I created this list, what I did is I added a comma after each one. The reason I did that is if we come here, you will see that when you're adding keywords, you can add multiple words like this. And to split between words or phrases, you just put a comma in and it puts that in. So what I can do to save myself a lot of time and spoons is go back to my keyword list, copy the entire list because it's got the commas in between, and then paste here, and then click return. Ta-da, they're all there. That was so much easier than trying to type them all in again. Now the next section is product images, and you can see here, that um, product images are what really sells your product. Um, they are the most important thing, and I can't stress that enough. Um, I do have a product images help guide that you can go to here, and that opens up in a new window. But briefly, I'll just talk about some of the things that do help um, products to really pop out of the screen. Um, so, 
something that you can do is use a plain background so that your item um, isn't distracted as, at all from anything else and you can clearly see what the item is. Try to get the lighting really right. right. If you can get outdoors, that is the best light you can possibly have in daytime, obviously. Or you can buy a light box from eBay relatively cheaply or make your own with some daylight saving, sorry, daylight lamps, which you might already have in your craft room. What I find is really good um, and will inspire us to create really great photos is going on to this website that I really love, which is not on the high street. Now I've done a, a, a search for spoon here and you can see there's lots of different spoon items on uh, not on the high street. What you notice is all of these are quite arty uh, photographs. And what it's doing is showing these spoons in use, which gives the customers uh, an idea and it helps them visualize that they will be able to use that item themselves, which helps with the justification of spending money. So you can see here, we've got spoons with some sugar cubes, which is really lovely way to advertise your spoon. You can see here, this is a bookmark, so it's done on a book. Um, this one here isn't so great. Um, the reason for that is um, we've got a roll of wallpaper here. Now, um, sample pieces of wallpaper are actually, if they're quite plain, really good to place under your items. Um, and you know, you can get free wallpaper samples from lots of different places. But what has happened here is they've used this roll of wallpaper, which is distracting from the item they're selling, which is a spoon. So try not to go overboard with some of your props and make sure that your item still stands out if you want to go a bit arty-farty with your images because the, these are really great but you can do a bit of an overkill. So if you're not too confident with your images and um, I'm not the best photographer in the world and all of my attention has been on helping you guys to sell. So forgive my image but it's perfectly fine. It's got a nice clear background and everybody can see what the item is. It's uncluttered. We've not got um, dirty washing in the background, um, cat hair all over it. We've not got anything like that. It's just crisp and clean, which is perfectly fine. So what we're going to do now is add the images. So just click here. And what you can do, if you've got more than one image, um, you can actually add it here when you upload your featured image. And I'm just going to show you where those images appear because for your featured image, you want to put your best image there. So your featured image will actually appear in the gallery listings here. And it's what makes people want to click into your item. And once they've clicked into the item, what they can see is the featured product image here really clearly and big. Um, if um, there were some gallery images here, they would appear underneath here for the customer to be able to click and they would just be little thumbnails here. So I'm going to add two images. And what I can do here is upload files. This is my media library of the images I've already got uploaded. So I'm going to upload these and what I can do is actually drag the image in here. Um, but I'm going to do it the old fashioned way, which is just select files. Okay, and I'm going to add, select two images. Click open, and it's going to download those two images for me. Okay, and when I saved my image, what I did was I gave it a name. And because I gave it a name, which was the same as my product name, what that's done in here is put in the title the name. And that helps with your search engine optimization. So it's telling Google what your image is. Now I do have some extra SEO going on there. But if you want to populate your title, make sure you save your image 
as the product name because what that also does is in the URL for your image which is where your image is saved it also puts it here okay oh what have I done oh sorry right okay so I'm going to add this image here to my featured image uh, set featured image and I want to add a gallery image, which is the other image I uploaded before. Now, when you're adding gallery images, you can only add one at a time. So I suggest when you add your featured image, download all of your images that you're going to use for that product. So I'm going to click this one and add to gallery here. And you can see what I've done is, um, because it can be a little bit confusing for people to understand the sizes of things, it's good to add a ruler against one of your gallery images or maybe a penny something like that that they can refer to and they can understand they can visualize the size of it because even when you put dimensions in your description it's surprising how many men think that six inches is a lot bigger okay so the next bit is um oh, the product type please ignore that for now um, i'm going to do something um fairly soon that's going to help us to add product options Okay, so go into the general tab and this is where you add your price. And the price of my necklace is 45 pounds. But I'm feeling generous today and I can add a sale price here. You can see there's this little box here. If I was to tick that, that would be for if I'd made uh, maybe a custom item that somebody had asked me to make specifically for them. And I wanted to make sure that only that customer could buy it. What I would do is tick this box and then once this item is published, I can uh, copy and paste the URL, which is the, uh, the link for the product um, page, and send that over to my customer and they'll be able to buy straight away. And other customers wouldn't be able to find that on our website. But I want everybody to look at my spoon, so I'm not going to tick that. Now in stock, if you can make as many as customers want, um, then you leave this completely blank. Um, but um, although I've not made these items yet, I know that I've only got enough materials to make about 10 of these because the silver is quite expensive. So I'm going to tick here because I have a limited quantity I can make or sell. And in here, I'm just going to put 10. I can either type it in or use these uppy and downy arrows here. Okay, and then in the shipping, we can leave this blank if we want to because uh, every crafty has in their store settings some default postage costs that we set up when we joined and you can amend those at any time um, that will just be you see in settings you can amend it there so we'll go to settings and postage which can be used for all of your products but this product might cost a bit more or less to post. So I might want to override my normal shop shipping. If that's the case, then you can add the information in here. Now you need to fill in both your postage costs within your own country and outside your country. Even if you don't want to post outside your country, you would need to tick this. So you need to fill all this information in if you want to override your shop postage. So I'm just going to add um, free shipping here because that's always recommended if you can afford to do it within your own country. When I say afford to do it, that does actually mean that you um, put the postage onto your product price uh, because customers don't like to really pay for things that are intangible. They like to touch and feel what they're buying so they can feel the value of your item. And there's lots and lots of research that says that customers much prefer to have free postage, even though really they know that it's been added onto the uh, product price. So I'm going to tick that. And also for postage outside my country, I'm quite willing to uh, post abroad. So I'm going to put four for four pounds here. Now remember all the currency on Conscious Crafties at the moment is in pounds, regardless of what country you're in. If you're in the United States, when you look on the website, uh, you will see all of our prices in dollars. And that's because we've got a conversion tool that does it. It recognizes what country you're from. But when you're adding your items, it doesn't know that. We need you to put it in pounds for now. 
but I will be changing that one day once I have enough money because it's past my brain cells. So um, I put four in here for four pounds. I don't need to put any pound sign because the computer knows that. Now, for this particular item, if somebody was to buy two of the same item from me, um, I won't want to charge twice for that postage because it's not going to cost me any more to send two because they're quite lightweight and small items. So I'm going to tick that so that if a customer buys a two, they will only be charged £4 postage if they live outside the UK, which is where I'm based. If, of course, you didn't want to ship outside your own country, just tick this and it will make sure that your items aren't sold to those people. Okay, it will be shown to those people, but they won't actually be able to buy because the shipping isn't set up for them and it will let them know that. There's another section here, which is for similar products. And that's really useful because it advertises similar products that you make to your customers because they might be interested in them. And they actually get clicked on a lot. And I'll just show you what they look like. So here. There's uh, Kerry's uh, Spoonie Hog, uh, which I absolutely love. And because she makes a range of hedgehogs, she's added her similar products here. So you've got Nana Hog, Brad and Groom Hog, Little Key Ring Hog, and what, uh, what's that? Oh, Business Hog. And you can add up to four of your similar products here. If you added any more, it would get a bit silly for the customer scrolling all the way down, okay? So here, I know that I've created another spoon in my shop. So I'm just going to, uh, it's a wooden spoon. So I'll just type in wood and it's going to search it for me. So mini wooden spoon, there we go. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, if I wasn't quite sure if maybe I didn't have the images ready, I could just save it as draft. Uh, but as I'm a seasoned crafty, I'm not going to save it as draft. I, I'm pretty happy with what I've listed. I'm just going to click add product. Um, so Some crafties prefer um, myself and Sonia to hold your hand and sometimes when you click add product for some crafties it will come to us and we'll check through it for you before publishing. But the majority of crafties um, are confident um, to sellers and they uh, list their items themselves. So they have the power to publish their own products when they click add product. So what happens when products are published? Now, this product would look like this. Okay, so you can see, just have a little look around the product screen. You can see I did add a sale price. So it's also added a sale banner to the image here. I had 10 in stock. Um, I ship from the United Kingdom, which is where I live, so all our customers are told where we're based. Um, it's got my shop name with a link, so links back to my shop. And it also says very clearly, handmade in 10 days, so it sets customers' expectations. We've all also got these sharing buttons here, which I'll come back to. So I've got my product description, product ratings for when customers rate this product, but also, just like eBay, uh, you have seller ratings, which is a combination of all of your reviews. And customers can click in there and see you know, that you're absolutely wonderful and they'll want to buy off you. It's also got my story because that helps um, us raise awareness of our various illnesses. Um, and in shipping, uh, you can see here I've got free UK shipping and £4 outside of the UK. And we've also got the returns policy that just appears on every product that we list. When items are published, they are also magically posted onto our market pay, Marketplace Facebook page and also our Twitter page. But it's really important that you also share your own items. And you can see here we've got the sharing buttons here. So it's really, really easy to share your items. Also, you can retweet uh, the tweets that we've uh, sent out when we first published the products and you can share the item on the marketplace. And it takes maybe about 10 minutes for it to appear in the marketplace. Um, for the marketplace, please do go in and make sure that you've got the settings as C first and your notifications turned on so you get to see your own crafts, but also your fellow crafties items. And do please be supportive and, and like people's items, maybe comment on them. 
because what that does is tell Facebook that we have interesting content and that then shows more people our items which means more customers. So also do take part in our Crafties Friends events which is where people can buddy up with one another every week with a different person and you share each other's products which gives you a new audience to see your items and it's working really really well with sales. So thanks very much for listening, I'm sorry it was so long but it's really worthwhile. Um, take care and I'll see you soon, bye bye.